Let me ask you some questions here. What does sickness and disease do? They steal, they kill, they destroy. What do they steal? They, they steal your hope for a future. They steal your finances. They steal your faith. I mean, it, it, it's a thief. It, it, it steals, it kills. What does it kill other than the obvious, the physical body? It, it, it kills things like your witness, your destiny. There's no right or wrong answer to any of this. You know what you're going through if you're sick. You know what, what this sickness and disease has stolen from you. But you may not understand who's behind the stealing. It's Satan. It's not God. Anyone that tells you that God has put this sickness and disease on you to teach you a lesson or to try your faith doesn't understand the word of God. And by the way, that's a works mentality and has nothing to do with the grace of God. And the grace of God is Jesus shedding his blood so that we can be redeemed. And that word redeemed not just means spiritually but it means to be saved, yes, spiritually, having our sins forgiven, eternal life, but also in the soulish realm, in the mind and the emotions being made whole, in the mind and the emotions being healed, and also in the physical body. And so sickness and disease, they steal, they kill, and they destroy. They destroy relationships. They they destroy your witness. They destroy your future. They just they're a wrecking ball and they just wreck havoc through your entire life. Jesus says in John 10, 10, the thief who is Satan comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. That's what this sickness and disease is doing to you. It's robbing you, it's stealing, it's killing and it's destroying. But Jesus says of himself that this is Jesus speaking, but I have come to give you life. And, and life in abundance. Does sickness and disease give you life? No, it, it, it robs you from it. It steals it. Jesus is the life giver. Healing is a good gift. And it comes from God. You might be, you know, wondering, you know, you know, why? Why is this happening to me? Okay, Jesus says, in this world you'll have tribulation, difficult times. Satan is the thief. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There are other reasons. And I'm sharing with you the main reasons why God's people are sick. One is a lack of teaching, a lack of understanding. Hosea 4, 6, the first part of it says, My people are destroyed for a lack of of knowledge if healing is one of these teachings that the enemy hates why because it's so powerful and it leads people to jesus marcos's testimony that i've shared with you has gone around and around the world over and over and so many people have been healed delivered born again i mean set right in the things of god because it just releases faith, faith and trust and hope for something better in God. And that's where you're going to find it. But healing is so rarely preached nowadays from the pulpit. It's like one of those doctrines that gets thrown in the back closet and the door is locked. There's an armed guard standing in front of it. And don't you dare try and open up that door. You know what I'm talking about. What I'm saying to you isn't anything new. I think it's wrong that people have to go searching for a church, for someone to believe with them, to find a pastor and a congregation that will believe with them because their local church tells them, you know, they're of the devil because they're believing for a miracle. How ridiculous. Why don't we get back into the word of God? Another reason why God's people are sick and dying before their time is because they are speaking faithless words. Their words are so negative. Proverbs 18, 21 tells us, 
that there's the power of life and death in the tongue. In other words, every word that we are speaking, we are either prophesying life or we're prophesying death. If you continue to use ill, ill words, negative words, you are cursing your body. If you're going to continue to say God doesn't heal, God doesn't heal anybody in this, in where we live. Nobody ever gets healed in our church. Well, you're just cursing. You're, you're, it's like you're building a wall between you and the promise of God being released. If you say to your, if you say over and over your situation, I am so sick and tired. Do you know what you're going to be? Your body's going to line up with your words and you're going to be sick and tired. I mean, I could go on and on and on this, but I, for the sake of time, I'm just telling you, your words have power, the power of life and death, and you need to learn to use them correctly. Another reason, I mean, and, and, and I'm going to tell you why, you know, another reason that God's people are sick is because their actions do not line up with their faith-filled words. What does it say in James Faith without works is dead. Let me give you a prime example of this. Um, say brother so-and-so is sick in the hospital and everybody's saying, you know, his family, everybody's saying, he's believing, he's standing strong for a miracle. And we're all like, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, brother so-and-so and, and his family are preparing for a funeral. Are those faith-filled actions they're speaking the right words. Yes, we're believing God for a mighty miracle. He's going to pull through. He's going to be healed. But you're ignorantly planning for a funeral. I'm telling you, both your words and your actions must line up together to have this miracle. You know, God wants you healed. Jesus paid a heavy price. In Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, it says, by his stripes, those healing whips, we are healed. And let me add this to the power of words. If you say, one day I'm going to be healed, one day God is going to heal me, one day God's going to reach down and touch me and heal my body and heal it, it's never going to happen because you're speaking wrong words. You say, what do you mean? I'm saying one day God's going to heal me. You're saying one day. The Bible teaches us that faith is now. Now is the day of salvation. Now, faith is now. Um, in Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of, 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 of I'm sorry, I'm, I'm messing up the whole verse for some reason. Faith starts with hope. Hope transforms into faith. If you're just hoping, it's never going to happen. And if you're saying one day, one day, you can never, you can never catch up to that future tense. You can never catch up tomorrow. God says it's now. So you need to speak words of faith now. Now faith. Amen. Now faith. And so those are the reasons. Though I mean, those are the real basic reasons why God's people are not healed as they should be. But, you know, that can all change. You know, you can learn how to believe. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Read and study the word. Speak out the word of God. Act on the word of God. Live the word of God. And like I said earlier, in, in, when I was sharing it, some of the testimonies, if you need healing in your body, now is not the time to study finances. You need to stay focused, focused on the healing word of God. Amen. I hope that helps you and blesses you.